Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap with Colleen Biggs. I am so excited to talk to Miss Morelda Rodriguez today. But before we do, I do want to thank our sponsor today, which is No Problem Parenting. Are you frustrated with your kids? Do you constantly worry about them? Or maybe you're just sick and tired of dealing with misbehaviors in your home. I'm a, I'm a mom. I know I did. Well, have no fear. No Problem Parenting is here to help you turn any emotional or behavioral problem into a no problem while strengthening your relationship with your kids at the same time. You don't have to be the bad guy to get your kids to behave. Join the No Problem Parenting community where you will find down-to-earth, practical, fun, no-nonsense, and even bass backwards tips and ideas for how to deal with and overcome any parenting challenge. Go to NoProblemParenting.com and get started now. Become the confident leader your kids crave you to be. So thank you, Jackie Finneman, so much for that. She's absolutely amazing and works with kids of all ages, you know, even through 20. So uh, if you're a mom of a child, I said, highly suggest you go to noproblemparenting.com. If anything, just listen to our podcast. They're wonderful. So our guest that we have here today, Marilda Rodriguez, is here to talk a little bit about grief, um, grief, and how do we move past grief? You know, when I had met Marilda, I hadn't known anybody in that space. And and grief is something very different for each one of us. I want to start with that. So if you're like, oh, I don't have any grief, don't get off the podcast yet because you think you don't have any grief, but something has happened along the way that could be causing some um, issues with you in your body and physical or whatever it may be. And that could be that energy of grief that you're holding on to. So Marilda Rodriguez is a grief massage therapist, functional medicine certified health coach, a massage therapy educator, a culinary wellness educator, an author, a speaker, and global wanderer with over 20 years of experience in the health and wellness space. Through grief massage therapy, Morelda helps her clients feel comforted when they are most vulnerable, allowing them the space to navigate emotional unknowns of grief and loss and gain control one step at a time. Morelda's wellness coaching programs help clients with mindset, food, and lifestyle habits, vital to staying healthy, adapting to losses, and building emotional resilience. Her clients emerge from their transformation feeling revitalized, confident, and powerful. Morelda, welcome to the show today. Oh, thank you so much, Colleen. So glad to be here. Now, I know that you've taken some leaps in your life that resulted in successes, and successes, and one in particular, which was really becoming a massage therapist. So talk to us about that journey and why grief massage or why massage therapy? What was it about that that gravitated you toward working with individuals in that type of way? Sure. I will start with the fact that I think the human body is so fascinating, so fascinating that I've been reading books about the human body since I was eight years old. And by the time I was 10, I was reading these little uh, home diagnosis books and asking my mom if I had this disease and that disease. And she would always tell me to go back and read some children's books, which are more suitable. But I've always been interested in the human body. However, um, as I was choosing my majors in college and things like that, I just didn't have the confidence to go into the medical field. I didn't want to deal with blood. I didn't want to deal with needles. I didn't want to do any of that. Um, so I went the route of this nice corporate career in human resources, which served me really well. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, I think I, that was not my soul's profession. That was my dad's profession and everybody else's profession for me. And, um, I was very successful in the corporate HR space, and there was a problem in our company, and it was kind of holding me back on my goals. And so during that time, I knew I would have to wait out the time. And I just asked my soul what I needed to do. 
And the next thing I knew, I was driving into the parking lot of a massage school and looking at enrollment and getting all excited, just like I did when I was eight years old, looking at these human body books. And um, from there, it just got to the point where I thought, oh my God, how am I going to tell my dad <laughs> that I'm, I'm going to enroll in this school? And thankfully, my dad didn't really say much. I think he just thought, oh, I'm bored and I just want to find something. And he was like, yeah, sure. Uh, and then it grew into something big. But the reason, you know, that ultimately I burned out in corporate America and decided to get off that bandwagon and into massage, uh, that was the second leap. The first leap was actually going to massage school. And the second leap was leaving corporate to go into HR. I'm sorry, into massage therapy, because I so believed in what I was doing. And there was no needles and there was no blood. Mm -hmm. And that really cemented it for me. Yeah, I think those of us that have utilized massage therapy for healing understand that. But I believe there is a vast majority of people out there still, Marelda, that are very confused by that. And they use massage therapy for relaxation purposes um, and sore muscles, right? Um, but we all know, well, maybe we don't. I know <laughs> that... Um, we harbor, we have energy, right? We're energy beings. And so we can harbor feelings, uh, negative energy in our bodies, which well up as um, physical manifestation. So do you want to define for our listeners really what grief is? Because I, I do believe that people misunderstand grief. They think grief as the loss of someone and you're grieving the loss of someone or the loss of a dog or a loss of a friend or a significant other. And, and that's how society and culture has identified grief. But how would you identify grief, Merelda, so that the listeners can understand what it is and bring awareness to it so they can identify if they have any of that going on in their lives or in their body to move past. So I have two points to two responses to your question. One is I want to define grief. And then I really want to talk a little bit about um, how massage actually heals people because there's a huge misunderstanding around that as well. So the first part around grief, when I define grief, I talk about a loss of attachment. When you love something, humans build attachments to everything, including their teacup set. All right. So <laughs> as creatures, we build attachments to blankies and binkies and all this other stuff. So when, I mean, we know grief as babies because you take that binky away from a baby and if they don't scream, you're really lucky. So that is actually our first experience of loss, removal of something we love or we're attached to. So the definition just really expands on that. So it's a loss of attachment to a human pet possession, lifestyle, or identity. Mm. And that's making it very succinct. Yeah. So when you lose that attachment, your reaction or your response to that loss are the um, feelings of that ache in your chest or that churning in your stomach or like the tightening of your jaw or your neck. And these are physical responses to that loss. Bless you. And um, when people experience that loss, the first thing that happens depending on their attachment. So if this is someone you love dearly, or this was the house, your dream house, and you lost it in the forest fires, uh, if this was something depending on the depth of your attachment, that is the depth of your response. Mm -hmm. So sometimes now life doesn't stop just because you're responding. So people feel, oh my God, I got to get my kids from school. Okay, I've got to go do this. I've got to go do that. So they don't have the space and don't know how to create that space to give themselves that morning time. And so then it gets bottled up. Then it gets pushed down. Then it gets, uh, you know, uh, 
somewhere into somewhere into the oblivion where you don't have to deal with it because you need the space. You don't want to suddenly be sobbing and then say, okay, I've got to go to a Zoom meeting. So people tend to be in avoidant behaviors because of what they have to do. Yeah. Um, so that I think is where people really need to look at where have the losses been? Have they processed that? Have they given them this, uh, given them this, themselves the space to process that? Now, I did want to talk very briefly about massage. And I think people's general understanding of massage is I go to a spa or a massage location, uh, whether it's a company or an individual therapist, and I go get a massage and I feel better and it helps me with my stress. But what a lot of people don't understand is massage actually matches whatever goal you are trying to achieve. Mm. So if you're a marathon runner, we have a whole program that matches the body in motion, recovery, if the day of the event, the recovery from the event, and how to uh, keep yourself together through the next uh, downtime until your next race. So if you're in pregnancy, how do you, through each trimester as this baby's growing and getting so heavy and bearing down on your pelvic area, how do you create that relief Mm-hmm. Okay, all oh, the stretching ligaments, how do you create that reprieve from that pulling down? So every bit of massage has what is is what is going on and what is it you want to achieve. So very similarly, grief is also a manifestation of a human emotion. And it shows up in the body with very definite signs and symptoms very much like a pregnancy, right? It's just that it's not as obvious as a pregnancy, but it has definite signs to it. And when you go in for a massage and it's addressed, it allows the person to feel the benefits and not feel so um, held down or crushed by that grief. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's get back to the beginning. Um, what you talked about with the loss of an identity or the loss of something that you were attached to. Um, I don't think anyone defines grief that way, the way you define it that, that I know of, unless they've been trained. So I, I hope the listeners are listening. Have you grieved over the loss of an identity? I'll use myself for an example. And I did go through this and I did grieve and there was, um, there was uh, tears, um, there was fear, there was exhaustion in my body. And it was the identity of grieving my identity of corporate America and who I was in corporate America to who I had become as an entrepreneur. And because I had taken that leap so drastically, I hadn't grieved that moment. I, I remember grieving when one of my favorite CEOs retired, you know, and having to go through that process. But I think we don't realize how much we harbor those energies and feelings in our bodies. Um, and from what I've been told, Merelda, pain that we have in our body, and I'm not talking about muscle fatigue because you just ran a, a marathon. I've been there too. <laughs> I've been there. I know that pain. And that is not me harboring any grief or energy. That is just my muscles are on fire and they hurt because they've been running for a straight four hours, you know? Um, but I'm talking about women or men that are feeling uh, a ton of pain in their back, but they've never been in a car accident or injured their back, right? They've got a lot of harbored pain in their shoulders, or I hear a lot of women that get headaches a lot, right? Migraines a lot. And, and I'm here to share real quickly. I had multiple migraines, went for CAT scans years and years and years ago. I was in a relationship that wasn't healthy at the time. And I didn't realize it was the relationship because you don't really ever connect those dots. Right. Mm -hmm. And they could, they're like, we have no idea what's wrong with you, why you're having these multiple migraines. And when I dissolve the relationship, the migraines went away my, um, my issue with, um, motion went away. I couldn't get on a cruise ship or a boat without wearing something or taking pills. Couldn't get on, you know, I had to drive all the time. I would always get motion sickness in a car. 
the minute that relationship was over and I changed my view of my life, those all went away. What does that tell us, Merelda? What does that tell us? So as you're talking, I'm thinking about how we approach changes from the Western world and the Eastern mm -hmm. world, because my heritage is Indian. I grew up, you know, in two countries. I grew up with a lot of Eastern philosophy. Uh, I grew up with a lot of, of Western philosophy, but the more, when I came to America, which is almost completely, obviously Western philosophy with the few people that are tuned into maybe acupuncture or shiatsu or something like that. Um, I find myself going back to my roots and looking at other things. And part of my licensure along the way involved being trained in traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. Now, how I use that is I don't personally do acupuncture, but I feel like it is such an important skill that I gained along the way. Because when I don't see, when someone comes to me with a complaint and I feel their tissue and I don't really feel something's wrong with it, now, today, standing in 2022, I know to check their emotions. But what I used to do is I would immediately switch off my Western brain, go into my Eastern brain and start saying things like, show me your tongue. Let me look at your eyes. Let me feel your pulses. Let me do. So these were diagnostics. Mm from the Eastern way. And then I would write them a little piece of paper that said, go to an acupuncturist and give them this note. And on the note, I would talk about where the energy was stuck, where there was a uh, need for, or maybe the person was deficient in a certain kind of energy. Mm -hmm. And so I would write these notes and give it to the person and say, can you please give it to your acupuncturist or here's who I recommend as an acupuncturist. So when you say that, you know, people uh, don't really know how to listen to their body a lot in the, in the Western world. In the Eastern world, we're very tuned into, oh, the weather's like this, it's going to be this, or don't eat this fruit, it's going to be like that. And I can hear my grandmas in my ears all the time. Uh, so I try to bring that into when I'm coaching people, but I always keep my East and West brains. Mm -hmm perspectives uh, um, on because I never know where I'm going to go with a client. So helping people really listen to their bodies and teaching them how to just ask the question, just ask the question. Um, so sometimes it seems esoteric and way out there, but I do give them little steps that they can kind of bring it a little close and relatable. Mm -hmm. No, I totally understand that. And so I am I want to get into the minds of our listeners for a minute. And listeners, please feel free to email me at info at callingbigs.net if you have a question about this episode um, of how to move past grief. Because now that we've defined grief for all of you, many of you are thinking, oh, there's been times in my life. And it could have happened when you were a baby. It could have happened when you were two or three, and maybe you don't remember something that was taken away from you or a separation at that time that you've never really worked through. And it manifests, it manifests in our energy in our body. Um, and so how do you help your clients? Talk to me, Merelda, about a client testimonial or someone that you had worked with and help them move that grief through um, and the benefits of that. You know, it's interesting that you brought up the, the young age that this can happen. And I can absolutely speak to one of my clients who, uh, an 80 year old man who came in on a referral from one of my uh, colleagues and she really didn't know how to direct him other than to say, oh, well, since you're grieving, you know, here's who can help you. Now, what he told her was that he was having all these issues in his body. And since she was his massage therapist, she was also tuned into his body. But he was really speaking of physical problems in his gut, right? So he had ideas, he had uh, inflammation all over. He had all these things. And um, as an 80 year old, he was retired. So it's not like he had corporate stress per se, right. but he wasn't able to really get a footing or handle on that. And so when she sent him to me, 
um, he told me about how he had all these losses and that's what we call multiple losses. And he at age two lost his father in his teenagers lost his brother and his mother never recovered from those losses. So he felt responsible for her. So he abandoned his childhood mm. to take care of his mom. And he always felt she should never have suffered. So he carried that burden for her all his life. Mm. Well, when he came in and we did his uh, grief massage, the first thing he said when he got off the table is, I no longer feel survivor's guilt. Mm. And this man had been carrying his grief, even though he didn't know it from age two. So 78 years worth of grief and the burden that he carried. So he, he really now, you know, it's not a one and done. Uh, he, he didn't come back. He didn't uh, really feel that he could afford his therapist and then coming to me and things. But he spoke very highly of that session because that was the first time he felt unburdened on any level. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, um, you know, you do one-to-ones working with people in person and you're out of uh, Chicago. Uh, what area of Illinois would you say you're out of, Merelda? I'm in the, I'm actually in the city of Chicago towards the north side. Got it. And uh, specifically, it's called Lakeview for people that are in Chicago. And um, I, that is the massage end of things. Uh, I also have my one on one clients that I coach from a wellness perspective. So those folks are global, they're mm -hmm. online on Zoom. And I also am now training massage therapists in grief massage. So I'm actually taking the show on the road. So I could be in any one city who's listening. Yeah. And part of what I do that's very different in my massage education is I bring in the public to get what I call demonstration work. So you can be yeah. a demo body for me and you get to see a piece of what grief massage is. And it has yeah. been so successful. People have been talking about it and saying, my mother needs to get this. My brother needs to get this. Mm -hmm. So it's been really great. So going all the way back, we identified what grief was. It's a loss of something that you're attached to right throughout your life. And, and how, if we don't move through that and past that, it will harbor. Uh, and just as you're the gentleman, the 80 year old gentleman, who was your client that you had, had referred to, um, had that problem and harbored all of that uh, pain for his mother and had not walk, worked through that. So now each one of you listeners think of what could be some grief that you're harboring or some areas. No one should have to suffer. I call this suffering, right? No one should have to suffer for these years. And Merelda is going to share with us now the best way to reach out to her, the best way to connect with her um, so that you can reach out to her yourself, have a conversation with her um, to understand if what you're feeling is grief and how she can direct you um, through uh, health of eating or stretching or even massage for you to get that, um, to help you move past this. We must take care of ourselves and not depend on the Western medical to just supply us pills for us to feel better. It's a temporary solution um, that just masks what the root cause is. And that's why I love what Merelda Rodriguez does in getting to the root cause. So Merelda, how can they reach out to you? And what's the best way once they, you know, get connected with you to, to com communicate with you? Uh, the best way is to go to my website, which is moreldarodriguez.com. And the second best way to learn about what I do is to go to my YouTube channel, where I will be putting out more videos. I just started it. So there's just a couple there, but it will be growing. Great. And I know that we have your link tree link, which will give them your YouTube link, your website link, and several other ways to connect with you and have a conversation. Uh, so we appreciate you sharing that link. And that's going to be in your um, podcast description uh, notes for all of you that are listening to this. Just click on that link at, the, at your fingertips and you'll be directed directly to her link to connect with her. And I highly recommend that each one of you do if you're feeling 
any of that in your body, if you're just not sure or doctor's not been able to figure out where your pain is coming from or what is happening. And I've been through this in my own life. Um, and I think I just stumbled upon the mm -hmm. cure by relieving myself from that burden of that relationship. But that was all by luck, honestly, that I was able to do that. So um, I know whenever I have pains in my body, um, I address them right away because I don't want to live in pain. I don't want to harbor energy um, or anything. And so we get to live a fulfilled life of abundance the more that we address these things that are happening in our body. Marelda, is there anything um, that you would like to leave uh, our listeners with today? Yes, I would like to say that grief is not to be feared. It is just to be addressed and learned. I love that. It's not to be feared. It's just to be addressed and learned. And I'm going to share with each one of you that you're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that will ever be. It is up to you. You do not have to live your life in fear, in pain, in grief. Take the steps necessary to do what you need to do to live the happiest life you could possibly live, pain-free and grief-free. Um, and thank you listeners for being with us. And as you move on through your next week, I want to remind you to be you and be strong. So thank you, Marilda, for joining us. Thank you all for listening. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye, everyone.